In this video I will show you how to design a simple memory allocator for your operating system. You will certainly know that in languages such as C or C++, the only way to access the heap memory, which is the part of memory that is not a stack, is to use functions such as malloc, free, calloc, realloc, and so on. In order to be able to do that on your own operating system, you need to write a memory allocator. The main things that the memory allocator should be able to do are first, lend the programmer some memory request, and second, allow the programmer to free the memory, that is, return it to the allocator after it's been used. The simplest form of allocation is linear allocation. You just have a pointer to a fixed location, and every time you allocate some memory, the pointer increases by the amount requested. The problem is, this way it is very difficult to free the memory. If the memory you want to free is the very last you allocated, you're in luck. You will just have to pop the allocated memory by decreasing the pointer. Notice that the data is still there, but the programmer is now allowed to overwrite it. If, on the other hand, you were trying to free something that you allocated a long time ago, you simply can't. Even if you kept track of the allocations and erased the memory, you could not reset the pointer to the beginning of that memory, because you would lose a bunch of memory that you did not want to free. Therefore, this stack-like method cannot be used, we need something else. A very simple implementation that fixes this problem is to use a bitmap to keep track of the currently occupied memory. The idea is that if a memory block is currently allocated, the corresponding bitmap entry will have value 1, otherwise it will have value 0. First of all, we initialize the memory, defining our total dynamic memory size. Then we construct a bitmap with one bit per block of dynamic memory. These blocks can have any size we want. They can be single bytes, which leads to fine granularity in the allocation, but higher space occupation, or larger values, which leads to coarse granularity and lower space occupation. Trade-offs between accuracy and complexity are very common in computer science, and in particular in these allocation problems. We now have a bunch of contiguous memory blocks, and a bitmap representing them. The first thing we want to do is define what happens when we call a malloc, asking for a certain number of bytes of memory. Assume that the memory and bitmap are initially empty. If we call the malloc asking for a certain number of bytes, we want to allocate a number of blocks that is equal to or greater than the number of requested bytes. Let's call this number of blocks b. One thing the algorithm could do is scan the bitmap from left to right, looking for b contiguous bits set to 0. If the allocator does manage to find these b contiguous bits set to 0, it will set all of them to 1 and will return the memory address of the beginning of the corresponding block chunk. If the allocator fails, it should find a way to tell the user that it's out of memory. One important thing to notice is that even if the overall available memory is greater than the requested one, we may still run out of memory. This is because freeing memory can lead to fragmentation. Fragmentation basically means that the memory turns into some sort of cheese thing with lots of little holes, and no single spot is large enough to fit our new data, which would, however, fit in the union of the holes. One procedure that we can perform to get rid of fragmentation is, well, defragmentation. This consists of taking the occupied memory and bunching it all up to one side. The main problem with this is that it takes quite a lot of time. In general, we want to avoid defragmentation, if possible. Then, how to do so? The main thing we can play with is the allocation policy we use. The method described so far, of just scanning from left to right until we find a free spot, is called first fit allocation. This is the allocation that our community work in progress operating system currently uses. Another possible method is what's called best fit allocation. Instead of scanning and returning the address of the first encountered suitable set of blocks, the allocator scans the whole bitmap and returns the address of the set that is closest in size to the requested memory amount. This leads to less fragmentation, but at the cost of a higher allocation time complexity, because we have to go through the whole bitmap. Given these basic operations, malloc and free, one can implement compound operations like realloc, which can copy a bunch of memory blocks to a newly allocated location of potentially different size and freeze the previous memory location. Hi, I have one last thing to say before the video ends. I recently set up a charity donation collaboration with the guys at Code Crafters. Basically, if you purchase their product with my link, 
A percentage will be donated to Doctors Without Borders, which is a charity that provides medical assistance to people affected by conflicts, epidemics, disasters, or exclusion from healthcare. Codecrafters provides a very useful tool that allows you to learn concepts in programming by recreating some of the most popular programs and utilities, such as Git and Docker, in your favorite language with careful step-by-step -step guidance. Learning by doing is, in my opinion, the most effective way to learn, and Codecrafters allows you to do just that. Make sure to use the link below if you're interested to participate in the donation. If you are not interested in the product, consider visiting the website of the charity anyway. You will find the link in the description.